name's Pete Watton uh, from the Learning from Work project. My name's John Casey from the Altor project. We're both uh, working on projects that are funded by HEA and JISC, looking at the developments of open educational resources. This interview between the two of us is looking at where we are in relation to our project, the progress and the lessons learned uh, in May 2011. So John, do you want to start off by telling me a little bit about what are the main aims of your project? Well, because we're a release strand uh, project, we've got a commitment to release the equivalent of an undergraduate course in terms of resources. Um, so we, we are doing that. We, we're aiming to release two undergraduate courses worth of resources, one in ceramics and one in fashion communication. The other main aims of our project are um, developing and communicating to our community the benefits and the rationale for being involved in open educational resource production, uh, clarifying institutional policies and procedures to, to guide this practice, uh, and trying to in, determine a sustainable way forward to do this, which is obviously on everyone's mind at the moment. Um, we're going to pilot internal processes uh, to, to do this as well, to help staff uh, get their materials out in a fit and quality-wise uh, standard. Uh, and we're going to enhance and develop a repository system, especially for learning resources that's currently being developed for us by EdShare. Southampton, um, and we've got to try and integrate that with the VLE. So it's quite ambitious what we're looking at, and the underlying uh, aim that runs through all this, because we're based in the Centre for Teaching and Learning at the UAL, is culture change in the teaching and learning practice across the UAL. Okay. So we're now at about between the six-month stage and the nine-month stage. Project. I know you have, a, uh, have an extension at the end. Taking stock, where, where do you think you are now? What do you think have been some of the achievements of the project, the project to date? I, I think um, actually exploring the rationale for doing this in the first place, what we uh, jokingly refer to as the philosophical phase of the project, I think that's been a real achievement. It's been communicated through the institution to date, uh, informally, in a viral manner, uh, and there's quite a lot of excitement about the project. Uh, we're about to start formal dissemination internally, we've done quite a lot externally, um, but I think tapping into the, the mood of the moment in the academic community and presenting a clear set of reasons to do this has, has been one of the achievements, the main, main achievement actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, the other, other stuff is um, we're getting a, a repository built uh, and that's going to have a big effect uh, on practice here. And the other thing is we've done some forward planning and it's gone down well at conferences in, and internally as well. The notion that the repository isn't the be all and end all of learning resource sharing. In fact, we've come up with a, a plan called the Alto Ecosystem, uh, which incorporates ideas that include branding, licensing, uh, and a social layer, a social network layer that's wrapped around the repository, and also a presentation layer. Because at the end of the day, a repository is a file store. It's not that great for presenting Although the file store concept is really important for a, an, in, an institution like this. So the, the rationale and the, the ecosystem plan for going forwards, I would say, are some of the main achievements. But now I've just thought of another one. <laughs> We've got a, a proposal, um, because it's a highly collegiate university, six different institutions, very, very different. Uh, to encourage sharing across the institution is always a challenge. And we've taken a lesson from British Columbia uh, uh, in Canada, who come up with a system called British Columbia Commons for internal sharing. And then an objective of the project from the start was to encourage internal sharing 
on the back of external sharing through OER. So we're proposing to develop a license just for internal sharing called UAL Commons that will be based on a Creative Commons license. And actually that could be one of the very big effects of the project going forward. The legal department here are very interested and quite excited about the prospect. Okay. What, what about, um, I suppose, the other side of it? I mean, it's a short project that's quite ambitious. Are there any challenges that you would say you face? <coughs> yeah, the short time scales make, makes things quite difficult. Um, we felt we were taking a risk by stopping and asking why at the start, but that has actually made things a lot easier. Uh, in art and design disciplines, it, it's not like a lot of academic disciplines. You might not have any lectures, for instance. A lot of it's very practice-based, um, so it, it's quite hard to create learning resources that an outsider will re relate to. So what we're doing is a mixture of old-school, open courseware-style resources, where you get course outlines, syllabus, and all the rest of it. Uh, together with a lot of smaller resources that illustrate the processes involved in, in the two courses. And we're also picking up um, a lot of uh, diverse resources from across the, the, the university as well. So, not being too hung up on certain forms of open education resource, I think is quite important. Um, put out what suits your institution and your discipline. There isn't one way to do this, I think, is one lesson I've learned. So you think it's kind of quite important that it reflects the culture of the organisation that it comes from yeah, in as well? Yeah, de definitely. And uh, another lesson we've learned, on the back of other people, like the Leeds Met uh, project in phase one, is also not to be too hung up about having highly polished resources as well. There's, there's a balance to strike between you being good enough So, I mean, I suppose following on from that, are, are, what advice would you give to perhaps other projects or maybe other institutions that don't have the funding that are looking towards OER? Are there lessons learned that you would particularly share? Yeah, um, think, think about why, first of all, and how it might benefit you. If, if, if you don't work out a rationale, then it, it probably won't last because it, it's got no substance behind it. Do that first, work out why you might want to do it, uh, and then do it in a low-key way. Try and tap into existing communities of practice uh, and, and projects that are moving in this direction anyway. Don't try and take people with you who are not interested. You'll end up wasting your time. Okay. And I suppose fi finally, in terms of what you hope to see as the, the legacy steps going to be from the project's point of view, what will you leave yeah. behind and how do you move it forward? Well, legacy-wise, we'll have a repository up and running, uh, which we've never had before for learning resources. We'll have a set of policies. We have the institution has accepted the use of Creative Commons licences for these learning resources, which has been quite a big step. Hopefully, we'll have an internal licensing system, which will actually draw the six colleges a lot closer to and signify of cultural yeah. change. Um, so that's one way of using the dreaded IPR effectively. It's, IPR is it's political, policy, yeah. more, more than technical, it would be another tip I would give to people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Um, other, other legacies, um, there'll be several, quite a few folk around the university who have bought into this and will keep doing it, because it fits very well well with the ethic of arts teaching and arts practice about sharing and disseminating your work. Um, in a time of austerity, it's already been uh, a driver for redu reducing the monotonous parts of work. So people are using video and handouts to reduce the monotonous and repetitive part of their works. So it, it does fit in quite well with developing business model yeah. at UAL. Yeah. So it's actually quite a, a hard-nosed 